So this concept of individual freedom did not emerge immediately, rather it emerged over a century. Do you remember the contribution of Raja Ram Mohan Roy during the Indian National Movement? He was the first person who demanded the freedom of press. He also argued that the state should be responsive to the needs of the individual and must provide them the means by which their needs are communicated. Later on, Indians continued this demand of freedom of press. Finally, the Constitution of India has included the freedom of expression under Article 90. So, this individual freedom has been inserted in the Constitution of India. Also, there is an article which prohibits arbitrary arrest. This you can relate with the Rollet Act Satyagraha, which empowered the British government to arrest any citizen of India without any trial. It violated the civil liberties and individual freedom of the citizens, but the Constitution of India has prohibited the arbitrary arrest. Apart from that, there are religious freedom and particularly the freedom of conscience. Freedom of conscience means it's an internal freedom. Internal freedom, it is available to the Indian citizen to have his own notion of God and determine his own relation of the God. So these are the individual freedoms in the constitution of India. Now we'll see the social justice. Another value or the core pillar of the constitution of India when the term here we use social justice does not mean only liberal in the classical western sense. Classical liberalism always says that the privileges or rights of the individuals or the demands of the social justice and community values. So Indian concept of social justice is different from than what is the western concept of social justice. According to Indian concept of social justice, how this our the Indian constitution differs. First thing is that our constitution has social justice in terms of reservation to the backward sections of the society, particularly scheduled caste and scheduled tribes. It also provides right to equality in order to overcome the old age injustices done to them. Apart from that, there are special constitutional provisions for their upliftment. So, you can see that Indian liberalism has two strands, one represented by Raja Ram Mohan Roy and another represented by Swami Vivekananda. The Indian liberalism strand represented by Raja Ram Mohan Roy focused on individual rights while the, the group which belong or the Indian liberalism notion based on the Swami Vivekananda, they were based on reordering the Hindu society in a on the basis of liberal principles and you can also see that this concept of social justice is included in the directive principles of state policy which are in the part 4 of the constitution of India after the part 3 fundamental rights. Having seen two core pillars or values, now we will move on the third one respect for diversity and minority rights. According to Indian constitution, there should be equal respect among the communities. It is easy to say but not easy to do because particularly in India it is not easy. Why? First, because communities do not always have the relationship based on equality because they tend to organize in a hierarchical relationship for example caste system. Secondly, whenever two communities see each other as equal, they become rivals. So this was a very huge challenge in front of our constitutional framers. So how to make communities liberal in their approach and foster the sense of equal respect among them under the existing conditions of a hierarchical or a rivalry society was a very big challenge faced by the framers of the constitution. Apart from that, if you will see France or Germany, they are based on the language. So they are linguistic communities. But India has having a multiple language, so it's a multiple cultural community. And unlike France and Germany, which are based on linguistic and religious communities, no one, no particular community in India can systematically dominate others. So, Constitution of India has provided rights, religious rights, to several 
religious communities to establish and run their own educational institutions government can also give them grant and government does not see religion as in the west as a matter of a private matter concerning the individual now we'll see the fourth pillar that is secularism here keep in mind that the indian concept of secularism is uh, completely different from the western concept of secularism so this indian concept of secularism is completely different from the western concept of secularism generally secular states will perceive religion as a matter of private matter and they refuse to give religion a public official recognition why so or uh, does this mean that the indian constitution is not secular does this mean that the indian constitution is not secular however the term secular is not mentioned anywhere in the constitution of india western concept of secularism means or it is based on the concept of mutual exclusion means it is based on the concept of mutual exclusion that is state and religion in order to protect the values such as individual freedom and the citizenship rights so what do you mean by the term mutual exclusion mutual exclusion means that both religion and state should stay away from the internal affairs of one another both religion and state should not interfere in each other and they should stay away from each other religion likewise should not dictate state policy influence or conduct of the state in other words mutual exclusion means religion and state must be strictly separated okay now we'll see what is the purpose uh, behind this kind of strict separation the only purpose behind is to safeguard the freedom of individual 